So the service starts and you want to get a head start in front of everyone. Try to get in as early as possible and start grinding the game. Try not to get distracted with long mining sessions. Try not to get distracted trying to build a humongous base. But it's also very important that you get away from the spawn and you don't want anyone to find your base of operations. So to do this, you want to grab some wood and make a boat. And you're going to pretty much get the hell out of there. But you're also going to need a whole bunch of materials on your way to your potential base. The first thing is sugar cane. Sugar cane can be found along beaches, on sand and grass, and you're gonna need a lot of it. And so, as much as you can get, basically. But enough, also, a very helpful thing you can get is sunken ships. Sunken ships can give you buried treasure maps, and if you do find those, go seek them out and get the treasure within them. But they can also give you iron, coal, emeralds, food, and all sorts of whatnot. That'll be very helpful for the strategy. Now, you will preferably want to place your base of operations in a village. And here, I found an oak village nearby, and this is going to be very, pretty much very essential to your uh, strategy to be able to get on top of the economy. And you want to get very basic tools here to be able to enter the nether. This would be iron armor, some food, some weapons, and to get those you might need to go mining, try to find a cave, or if you really need to, you can just mine straight down through a small staircase. But what's very essential is you are able to survive in the nether. But what's also very essential before you enter the nether is to make a sugar cane farm. Sugar cane farms, like this one I make right here, uh, pretty much the base of what you need. I just recommend having two rows of dirt and placing all the sugar cane that you found on the sides on top of them. Whenever you harvest from this, do not take the bottom layer, just the top two. And like I said, you're also going to need a whole bunch of blocks to be able to traverse over the lodged lava pits within the nether. And they can be any blocks, it doesn't really matter. And uh, I, if you are a veteran at Minecraft, you probably know what I'm heading towards. So how to get to the nether, you can use an iron bucket and do what I do here using a water bucket. And you can constantly place lavas in the places where you want obsidian, get a little flint and steel, and go to the nether. Hopefully you'll get a good spawn. I did not get a very good spawn here. I was in a cave full of lava. But if you don't know what we're going through, we're going to a nether fortress. Um, you just want to explore, go over lava pits, but eventually you'll come across one like I did right here. As you do so, you want to find two things. The first thing is what is a blaze spawner, which is the most essential part, and optional, you can find the maze, but I highly suggest you find it. Now, if you don't know where I'm going, you gotta kill the blazes. I recommend you get enough to be able to make a few potions, and optionally, you would want to get enough to be able to enter the end, so maybe around 10 or 12 is a, is a good amount to get. You can get less if you think you can, though. And you want to kill a whole bunch of blazes, be careful not to die, of course. And if you really need to, you can bring some golden apples if you really need to. But, of course, you can enter the maze and get a whole bunch of supplies. Diamonds, more armor, some gold, very helpful. But what you also might want to grab while you're in those mazes is some nether wood. It can only be found here and other than some bastions, but also leave one behind you in case. So you can kind of just uh, go back to spawn. Now, if you keep inventories on and your spawn is set, you can just kill yourself by jumping into a pit of lava. But if not, you'd have to return to the portal to enter the village. Now, may I remind you to subscribe and like this video if you want to grow. And what you have to do back at your village is start setting up the farm. You want to grab all of the workbenches, including the smithing table, the saw blade, the grindstone, the fletching table, the cardiography table, the, the blast furnace, the smoker, a barrel, a composter, and a loom. I butchered those, I swear. Um, and you want to build what I'm building right here. You want to start with some fences, with some blocks around them so that something can get in but can't get out. Next, you would have to place your workbenches inside of the thing and villagers will come in to get a job and can't get out. After you have enough, you can kill all the green ones. These are called nitwits. They don't take jobs, but make sure not to kill them like I do here because of the prices. And eventually you want to make a roof to make your job significantly easier for the future. Um, this will help you a lot. And now you can get rid of the blocks around it, but you also need to get in. So here's a few ways to get in that villagers can get out. You can use trapdoors on a roof so you can get in and can't get out. This is the way I use personally, putting a fence on top of a uh, a, a mat on top of a fence so you can get in and out. You can also use ladders. The villager is not very good at going up and down ladders at all. And you can also just use a very small parkour jump so that they won't be want to go through that. Next, you're going to have to separate them like I do here. You can use slabs or trapdoors, but trapdoors are easier in my opinion, but they cost more wood. And afterwards, you would have to sanction a small thing behind them, or you can just make a new portion of this farm like I do here. And you can also make a roof. This, one, this part is really essential to the function. You can also get rid of the fences in between there because this section is for 
zombifying your villagers. And that's the goal. And eventually at night, you'd have to get a zombie, bring him into the farm, and isolate one zombie with each villager. This will help you significantly in the future, trust me. And with this, you can uh, break the obstacles in the way of the zombie to the villager so that the villagers will be infected by the zombies. Now, in this case, I accidentally had it on easy mode, which is not good because the villagers will die and not be zombified. Like you'll see me running up and see to my disappointment in myself. So what you would want it to be is hard mode. It has to be in hard mode. If it's not hard mode, there's a chance a zombie will become a zombie villager, but it's going to be really small and you have to do this over and over and over again by breeding villagers. It's going to be really difficult, but it'll become a zombie villager. So you're going to have to do is to make a potion. You want to place a fermented spider eye over some water bottles, and then you want to place a gunpowder over the weakness potions to make them splash potions of weakness. With these potions, you're going to have to also use a golden apple, which you make just like this. And with this golden apple, you're going to have to cure the villager by throwing the weakness potion and then curing him with the golden apple. You can now kill the zombie with it because it's unnecessary. Um, because after it infects it, it's perfect. It'll be fine. But after a pretty long time, between like 5 to 10 minutes, something it turns back into a normal villager. And this will significantly decrease the prices that these villagers have. Now you're gonna want to have a librarian here for this one so that you can harvest the sugar cane that we planted earlier, which should be grown by now, and trade it in with paper. This is going to give you not only level ups for the villager, but it's also going to give you emeralds, which is going to be essential for the next part. So to be able to do this, you just move the sugar cane to your crafting table, make some paper like I do right here, and trade it with the villager as much as you can. Now if multiple different villagers, you can get more than 16 emeralds like I do here. But if you only have one, you can usually get 16 emeralds every single time you trade with the villager. Now, let's say that you can use any villager, because you can. And with the librarian like I had previously, you can use paper for the enchantment books and the name tag. But there's also other villagers like the cleric here, which you can get bottles of enchanting. Weapon sifts can give you diamond axes and diamond swords. But most importantly, armorers can give you diamond armor for one emerald each piece, which is very, very helpful. Now, to be able to get mending books, which is also a very, very hard thing to get in Minecraft, you can simply get one of these villagers which have low trades and constantly start replacing a lectern. And eventually, there's a very small chance that the book that you will sell is a mending book. And when it is a mending book, like I get right here, you can continue these steps and be able to get that mending book for really, really cheap. Now, of course, pretend you didn't have any villagers whatsoever, no village or anything, you got pretty much unlucky. Then you have one solution, and that solution is to get a zombie, naturally spawning zombie villager. And he's a little rare, but pretty much it's the same steps after infecting the zombie. But of course, you'll have to make the workbenches, you'll have to set up this place uh, and this uh, little farm here and everything beforehand. But pretend you want to lower the prices even more, then there's one way to do that, which is killing a whole bunch of pillagers at a pillager outpost until you get the flag guy down. The flag guy will give you uh, the exile achievement and the effect. After you go back into the village which you are farming at, this will cause a raid. The raids are pretty hard. I had some difficulty with diamond armor and another right sword. But after the, this, you'll get hero of the village and this will lower the prices even more. With trading with villagers so much, you'll have a lot of gear. Your friends will come up to you and want some of them. And in exchange, you can make them do some manual labor, perhaps making another farm or farming your sugarcane farm. Either way, you are now on top of the economy. Good luck. Don't abuse your power.